you may write down or I will bring up this uh, draining schedule again anytime. And for the uh, question number one, the uh, first state is uh, you plug in number one into uh, n squared, and then the energy are these constants over L squared. If uh, you have the state number two, then n squared converts into four, and energy offset uh, between first and second states will be all these constants over L squared uh, and four minus one in brackets. And then if you solve for the uh, for the length, if you solve for, for the length, uh, there will be uh, square root constants four minus one, and then this uh, energy offset that uh, one is getting at the, at the task uh, of, of the homework. If you see equation an attempt to solve uh, for L, if uh, give full credit, even if there are the numbers are uh, look strange. If you do not see final equation, but if you see that someone is uh, trying to evaluate energy of first and second state and transition between them, give partial credit and try to be as, uh, as generous as possible. Okay, number two. So some of you did this assignment much better than, than I could. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to flip back and uh, once again, so you have particle in the box and we need to find matrix elements of the uh, position element between first and uh, second state. So for the, if um, the particle is staying in state one, if you are looking for matrix element between one and one, and the same if it is uh, in number two, if you look for matrix element between two and two, it is just L over two. Uh, it's um, quite trivial and even without uh, calculations, it is, it is uh, the distribution is symmetric, therefore it will be in the middle of, of the box. If uh, we are looking for so-called transition matrix element when the initial and final states are different this is quite a challenging problem and uh, again uh, we'll, we'll go to the to the answer but if you please be very forgiving to any errors uh, that you see so in the front we have normalization uh, then we integrate uh, from zero to l over dx x is our operator and then we have um, sine of two pi x and sine of pi x. So um, products are not comfortable for integration. If one uh, considers product of science as a subtraction of, of cosines, then one can uh, express our matrix element of interest as uh, integral x cosine of uh, subtraction of this two pi x and two pi x and pi x and summation of pi x and two pi x. So it will be cosine of x and cosine of three x. So in some sense, we do have uh, two implementations of an integral of i sub n integral x d dx sine n pi x over L. The difference is that uh, n is uh, taking number one and number three in these implementations, but we can try to take uh, integral in general and then uh, just plug in the uh, specific value of n. So 
how do I take this integral? So it's here. Um, I do not like uh, the complicated argument of cosine. And if I change the integration variable from dx to d of the same stuff as a as a uh, have as an argument of the of the cosine, then it will be a little easier. And in order to compensate it, I multiply and divide by, by the same number. Then uh, A sign of uh, n by x d n by x. If we would have only this sign and this dx and integral here, it will be uh, what is integral of the sign? Minus sign. Huh? Minus sign. Minus or plus? Oh, sign. Sorry, not the right. Okay, sign. So uh, the whole expression here can be. Uh, represented as derivative of sine of this stuff, right? So if you take derivative of, of, of uh, sine, we'll get cosine. D sine, and then all this uh, long and boring stuff in, in the brackets. So I do have it here, I sub n, X D of, of sine of, of this stuff. Now we can uh, think that U is, well, X is one function U, V is another function uh, sine, and then uh, one can practice integration uh, by parts, right? So product of functions minus integral where the function and uh, derivative are uh, swapped. So why do I do it? Because there, there are no table integrals of uh, x times sine, how to take it, or I do not have table integrals of, of in front of me. Then if I uh, practice this uh, prescription, it will be product of x times sine, minus integral of sine dx. So uh, the product, if x equals zero, product is equal to zero. If x equals L, the sine will be zero at this place. So we can, we can uh, remove the, the first uh, term. And the last term is just integration of sine which will be cosine, we take care of the um, constants up front. And it will be uh, L over n squared over pi squared. In case if the uh, cosine is even, if it is one, two, three, five. If it is odd, then uh, the cosine at the half period is zero. Therefore, this integral answer depends on whether the uh, argument is even or odd. So if it would be zero, two, four, it would be zero. But we need to evaluate i sub n equals one and three. So we take this uh, expression with uh, n equals one and n equals three. And uh, if I if I practice it like I sub one, I sub three, it will be two nines L over pi squared and just two L over pi squared. And if I subtract them and uh, do the uh, arithmetic. And plug in the so pi squared is about ten. And if I take this this fraction and take care of the of the sign, it will be approximately. It's not exactly minus L over five. So a little comment: 
before we go forward. Uh, so if you if you see uh, this answer and for for here two and one, the answer is the same. So if you see this answer, give full credit. If you see only uh, one one and two two, give a half credit. And if you see the effort, give a partial credit uh, between between uh, half and, and, and full. Um, what the, uh, before we go forward, I, I know that we all are worrying about grading and, and uh, tracking back what we did during the homework, but there is a little comment related to the main uh, message of the course. So, if matrix element between the uh, of an operator between non-equal states is non-zero. It, it often corresponds to the situation when there is a non-zero probability that system is able to jump from one quantum state to another one. It deals with this uh, uh, big lie of quantum theory that it stays wherever uh, the, the system stays in the excited state it was created. If you do have such operators that convert it from one state to another, if the system is not isolated but through this operator interacts with outer uh, world, then we have a door to describe transition between quantum states. So it is not only little academic exercise and torture and homework. It is a very big uh, message inside this exercise. So uh, when numbers here or states here are not equal, the matrix element can be non-zero anyway. Okay, so done with uh, number two. Hope you gave uh, good grades to whoever you're grading. Now, uh, number three. So number three cannot be done without number two. Oh, and um, if you see for, for the, uh, if you see results for the momentum matrix elements, just give extra credit because it was uh, too complicated and uh, I know how hard it is, so be generous. If uh, someone is getting more than 100%, uh, percent, I will be only happy. Um, there was a re requirement to find expectation uh, matrix elements of, of momentum operator. If someone did it, just uh, make a reward. So, uh, number three. The question is to explore what happens to the particle in the box if the initial state is a uh, superposition of uh, first and second state and the expansion coefficients are one over square root of two and i over square root of two. So this is a uh, very bad torture. I hate myself for giving some, such a sign. Typically, uh, if you look through the, uh, this is a standard problem that one can find uh, answer in the textbooks, but typically one puts here one and one. Which is easy when normalizing it. This i doesn't change normalization, but it shifts the phase and makes calculation uh, a little bit more challenging. So here is the initial state where c sub one and c sub two are those uh, one over square root of two, i over square root of two. Each of the states uh, evolve in time according to the eigenstate, right? You move its phase, the imaginary exponential. Uh, and the first two lines, in some sense, it is an uh, answer on the uh, on the sub question I A. Write down your prediction of future. So it's kind of true. Now, uh, please find x, well, x of, x of uh, time equals zero. P of time equals zero is trivial, but position, expectation value of position as function of time, uh, this um, may have been a challenge. And uh, if problem number two was not done or done incorrectly, then everything in problem number three is failing. <laughs> so it is a trap. <laughs> so uh, how do you find expectation value? We practice uh, the Psi 
x sin dx, right? And if you plug in uh, this stuff explicitly, then with, with Brian get then one is getting uh, four terms. The stuff that depends on uh, time dependent coefficients, and then matrix elements uh, of the position operator in the basis of eigenstates of oscillator. So uh, probably some of you were really, really responsible and placed here exact values with like uh, eight ninths L or pi squared, which is good. I'm just uh, trying to be as, as simple as, as possible. Okay, and from now on, there, there are not much uh, thinking, but it is quite a calligraphic exercise. If, uh, no matter whether you do copy based on the computer or you write by pen and paper. So it's uh, 15, 20 minutes of, of, of writing without thinking. So we plug in the uh, time dependence and values of expansion coefficients, and those stuff forms the uh, problem number two. Let's go here. So one was square root of two, one was square root of two, so it's C1, C1. And then there are, uh, there is a time dependence, which is the same for uh, energy, but it rolls forwards and backwards in time. So they compensate each other. Now for uh, second part, it will be, C1, C2, and uh, C1 is conjugated, C2 is not. And then uh, the time evolution goes for, uh, forwards and backwards in time. When we multiply them together, we are getting subtraction of E2 minus E1. When we're going here, it will be C2 star. Therefore, we have a flip of sign in front of the imaginary unit. And C1. And then it's, uh, it, there will be also a subtraction of E2 minus E1, but overall sign will flip. And then if we get to the fourth term, uh, it will be C2 star, C2 without star. I times I minus I minus I minus U1. And here, uh, this accumulation of phase in the opposite direction cancel each other. So if I uh, go forward, this uh, this simplifications, the product of expansion coefficients and, and time evolution for the first and last will be one half. And then expectation value of matrix element is L over two midway uh, where the center of the box is. For the cross terms, it will be I over two minus I over two evolution of energy difference forwards in time, backwards in time. Um, there is no error just. And the matrix element uh, is uh, minus L or, or five approximately. So there is nothing rather than uh, rather than just uh, getting things together. There is no quantum thing. It's only only getting together. So from first and last one half plus one half one L over two. And I. I was screaming my eyes uh, how you guys did the homework. Someone got uh, L over two as a final answer without oscillations. But uh, to be more precise and more correct, there, there are contributions from cross terms. So uh, imaginary stuff, the L over five, and then subtraction of two imaginary exponentials 
thank to all by the order and words in the same. And then um, this Euler equation, this imaginary unit disappears and everything becomes uh, real. So the answer will be L over two minus L over five sine of this energy subtraction. So if zero is uh, beginning of our box, L is uh, end of our box, here is the middle point, it will oscillate uh, from the, uh, around the center with a period corresponding to this uh, energy, energy offset. And first it will go down, then go up. If uh, I would, or we would use a different phase, like one over square root of two and one over square root of two, or both will be imaginary, um, it would shift the phase. It will be still the same oscillations, but it will start maybe at the top as a cosine or in the center as a sine is positive plus in, in front. And this result looks very similar to what you've got in your MATLAB homework number three. Okay? So if I would be uh, on the board of making this homework and they had no idea how to do it, I would just redo uh, MATLAB stuff and, and plot, plot this answer. So try to be generous, give as much credit as possible. Let's go to the next one. Uh, for number four, it is momentum doesn't change with time. Position grows linearly, proportional to momentum time times uh, So one, one can just declare answer because it's kind of, kind of uh, trivial and we count in, in, in the class. Uh, number five, uh, potential uh, of free acceleration. There is a little thing that may have driven uh, you guys uh, crazy. So if one is practicing equation, Heisenberg equation of motion for position only, it will be coupled to the uh, equation of motion for momentum. And for momentum, one needs to do a little uh, derivations. So this stuff, equation of motion for position is what we did in, the, in class. And it will be, uh, so time derivative of operator of position will be some constants h bar over and, uh, operator of momentum. But then one would need to um, find how the momentum is uh, changing over time. And this stuff is um, a little bit more challenging. So one uh, needs to plug in this uh, momentum into Heisenberg equation of motion. So here is the Hamiltonian. Uh, momentum does compute with kinetic energy, but it does not compute with uh, the potential energy. So it will be potential times uh, momentum minus momentum times potential. And then one needs to uh, evaluate this stuff for a specific potential, which is minus m g h one. I don't remember the sign, but uh, uh, free for uh, acceleration. So we do it in the same way as uh, we did when we got acquainted with the concept of, of commutation. We plug in the arbitrary function at the, at the end. And here the 
derivative applies only to function. Here it applies both to the potential and function. And if one carefully opens uh, this uh, derivative of a product, then it uh, opens up in two terms. And then the uh, first and last terms drop. So the commutation between um, potential and momentum is a derivative of uh, potential over, over position. And if you plug in the explicit value of uh, our free acceleration stuff, it will be just uh, mg, which uh, in analog to classical physics, just a force. So it kind of makes sense. But the reason to change momentum is uh, the force. But here we come to it from a quantum uh, approach. And this little derivation is often referred as Kelman Feynman theorem of. Uh, uh, prep, which is really needed for modeling thermal motion of molecules. Okay, then uh, this one can be solved. So we have uh, the momentum is uh, will be changing this constant pace, which will mean it will uh, increase linearly this time, and uh, position will be. Changing in time according to momentum. So, if one integrates this uh, system of connected uh, functions, then momentum just grows linear in time. And then, second integration for position will give this uh, mass acceleration times square root of two. Make sense? Okay. Let's check what is the time and how tired you are. <gasps> it's not my phone. Where is mine? Uh -oh. <laughs> so um, some of you did solve this um, problem number six for extra credit really quick. And uh, I really admire how, you, how quickly you guys did it. Uh, for me, when I was solving it, it took much longer because I was trying to prove that one can start from exp uh, imaginary exponentials and get signs and cosines from it. But if you are just uh, here, here, I will share this uh, slides. But uh, if you were taking uh, differential equations and know how to solve this uh, type of equation, uh, you can arrive to sine and cosine uh, uh, quicker. It will be it will be really good. So it's just, um, let me go back to the equation. So if we have two variables and they are cross coupled, so it's linear, linear equation in time, they're cross coupled. It is an equation of, of a circle, of a point moving in a circle, or projections are sine and cosine. Whew. And if you see this uh, done partially or fully, just give credit. And <clears throat> I think we are done. Our time is all also uh, finished. So uh, please add together, add together all uh, points and uh, play them on the first uh, on the first page.